Hey there, my fellow YouTubians. The day has finally come uh, for V. Rose Be Happy and I to start officially uh, our series of review videos on the films of David Fincher. Um, the, um, well, uh, today, of course, is September 22nd, 2010. And for me, it's a rather significant day because it was exactly 15 years ago uh, today uh, that I was living in the suburbs, working in retail. And uh, on this particular September 22nd, um, I didn't need to start work until later on in the evening, so I decided to go to the multiplex and catch a film um, early in the day before I went to work. As I recall, Showgirls actually came out that day, but I didn't go see that movie. I went to see this one. This is David Fincher's second feature film after he did the third Alien movie with Sigourney Weaver. Um, and my expectations were not sky high in this movie. I, um, well, when I first, when the movie first began, basically you have the two main characters, the cops, played by Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt, meeting for the first time. And they have a little discussion, uh, kind of an argument really. Um, they have different attitudes, different sort of demeanors. And uh, of course, not only that, but um, Brad Pitt is new to the town and uh, Morgan Freeman's about to retire and go off and live on a farm somewhere. Um, so I'm sitting there going, oh great, I haven't seen this dozens of times before. Thrill me already, you know? I mean, I don't walk out of movies hardly ever. It, it, you know, I mean, I'll give them a shot. So, but, but I was already kind of a little, little pissed at what I was seeing. But after that was over the credits, uh, the opening credits, which are really cool looking, uh, started. And, uh, and then the first scene in which they're investigating the case together, which is basically this enormously overweight, this incredibly overweight guy who's face down in a bowl of spaghetti with his hands and ankles tied and a bucket of bomb below him. Uh, they're investigating the cause of his death and I sat there thinking to myself, uh-oh, what's gonna happen next? I started to get kind of nervous that this movie was gonna show me something that I didn't actually want to see. Normally I'm really good at happy, uh, handling violence or, or scary movies. You know, I, The Exorcist, uh, I was fine with uh, Clockwork Orange, you know, I handled that okay. As, as a matter of fact, Clockwork Orange was kind of fun despite all the, you know, horrible things that happened in it. Um, but this was uh, getting to be a little unnerving. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting, you know, them to chase around a killer looking for clues and finally catch him. Um, but as the film wore on and things got more and more ominous and dark, and the lighting in this movie is very, very dark, and the music is very ominous. It just rises a little. There are, there are, there are moments in the movie where the music will hit a chord twice and then rise slightly and hit that chord twice and then rise a little more in pitch and go twice again. And, you know, for some reason, I just, you know, a little, it freaked me out a little bit. And then about halfway through the movie, there's a scene in which they're investigating another crime scene. And something happens, some, a big jolt, and I jump three feet out of my chair. I was completely not expecting that. It's one of the greatest shocks I've ever experienced while watching a movie. Right up there, was, it, it was uh, any reservations that I had about the movie at that point. Any beefs that I had with it were just forgotten immediately. And I was so wrapped up in it, so wrapped up in it. By the time they actually find out who the killer is, and, and, and encounter him, and he shoots at them, and they start chasing him. I'm sitting there going, please catch him, please catch him, he's so dangerous, please get him already, you know? And I wasn't, you know, at this point I'm not thinking about the acting, I'm not thinking about the, the story convolutions, or, or how the shots are working, or anything like that, I'm just totally wrapped up in the experience. Normally I just analyze a movie when I watch it. And it's a rare movie that can really involve me emotionally, and this was working like gangbusters. And then, of course, we get to the end, uh, where they're going to find, basically, what is supposed to be the last victims. And I'm sitting there in my chair like this. I'm shaking, my hands are shaking, I'm laughing uncontrollably because I'm so excited and, like, scared at the same time. There has never been a movie that I've seen throughout all my adulthood. I mean, when you're a kid, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in, in a story, you know, and forget yourself. You know, you, you know whatever's happening on screen is, is, becomes real for you. Um, but as a grown-up, there has never been a movie that's more, been more effective at psychologically transporting me away from sitting in a theater and just being totally wrapped up in what's happening. Uh, the end, oh my goodness, the end, the end of this movie, I was just like, no, 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 that's so bad. And, and then finally, once it's over, the credits, which are, even, which are even cooler than the opening credits, and then the lights come up and I just couldn't move. I just kind of sat there. 
I, I just, I, I couldn't move. I was so utterly floored by, by what I'd just seen. And it wasn't until, you know, uh, a lot of time had passed, I finally pulled myself up out of my chair and walked out. And, and after that, I just told everybody I knew about this movie. I told everybody to go see this movie. Someone asked me, oh yeah, Seven, I, I've been hearing a lot about this movie. It's a must-see, isn't it? A must-see. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not a must-see. It's essential. And she's like, ooh, good, I gotta go see that, you know? I even edited together a, a version of the movie once it came out in video with the most gruesome parts cut out so that my mom could watch it. I just could not shut up about this movie. Oh, and the funniest part was, since I had to work right after seeing the movie, I worked in a shoe store. A lady customer comes up to me with a shoe, says, hi, could I see this in a size seven? I go, yes, of course, please have a seat. I'll be right back with that. Man, so anyway, this right here is the special edition laser disc, which is what film collectors uh, bought before uh, DVDs came out. And I actually saved a, a bunch of memorabilia from this. Here are my tickets. I saved all my tickets. I never do this. I never do this. This is just, this is September 22nd right here. It's the first ticket I bought, and I marked it with sloth on the back because that was the most uh, uh, outrageous. Uh, uh, event at, at that particular screening and gluttony, wrath, lust was also a really, really big one. And I saved some reviews as well. I'm not going to read all these because I don't have time, but uh, yeah, some of them are very positive. We got the one from here from uh, um, Film Threats and the British edition of Premiere and the British uh, film magazine Empire, and they're all just like ecstatic over this movie. And you know, I just, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those experiences that I'll never forget. I haven't actually sat down and watched the movie as a whole in, in quite a number of years, because uh, I know it so well. I know every scene, I know most of the dialogue by heart. Um, what I've retained is the feeling, the feeling that I got from watching it for the first time, that, that, that incredible excitement at seeing something so amazing after having suffered through the previous summer with Batman Forever and Species and Judge Dredd and all kinds of other stuff, clueless, stuff that, you know, I couldn't care less about. And after this movie, man, I, I, I was actually inspired enough to actually go out months later and buy my first home PC so I could start writing, so I could start maybe, you know, because, you know, I didn't want to, you know, just sit around watching movies for the rest of my life. I wanted to, like, actually participate in the making of one at some point. Um, and this was kind of a motivator there. So, yeah, quite an experience and, um, <laughs> It's all downhill from here, really. I mean, <laughs> you know, we're, Fincher's a terrific director. I love him, and, and a lot of his movies are, are fantastic, but, you know, I don't think anything's ever gonna match this. Um, ho, 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 here's hoping, but, but probably not. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't seen this movie and you like thrillers or horror movies, I couldn't recommend it more strongly. Could not possibly. You know, it's this top of my list in every regard. Um, V. Rose Be Happy, of course, is also posting her own review uh, on her channel of this movie today. <clears throat> so there's a link to her channel below. Please go uh, check that out. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we look forward to um, talking more about Pinscher Films. And of course, after that, we'll be doing Martin Scorsese. So thanks. Take it easy.